Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremy with RBA Supplies. Again, that's rbasupplies.com. Uh, I wanted to make a couple of videos, or a long video, uh, describing XC116, some of the characteristics of the material, uh, some of the uh, things that you want to be uh, uh, particularly uh, cautious about, and then uh, describe some of the questions that we've had and give some answers on it. Uh, one of the things we're going to start with is uh, deciphering the difference between treated and untreated XC116. So it's very important that when you get XC116 that you make sure that it's treated material. Now with that said, all XC116 that comes from rbasupplies.com will always be properly treated. And that is to be said that it is kiln treated above and beyond the standards that are recommended by the manufacturer. Some other companies that you might get XC116 from, from uh, might have uh, pictures on their site, something to this effect, uh, where they have the ends of the XC116 taped up. So that leads a person to the natural question of why. Why would they uh, tape up the ends of the material? And the answer to it is going to be profoundly simple to explain. Uh, XC116, when it hasn't been kiln treated, uh, and you cut it, it sort of mushrooms, what I call uh, sprouting open. Uh, that's the easiest way to tell whether your XC116 is treated or not treated. Uh, and I call it the cut test. And by cut test, I mean very simply that you cut the material and see what happens. So let's go ahead and cut some XC116 that has not been kiln treated. This is pre-treatment. And you're going to notice that when I cut it, using my just handy dandy dikes here, uh, when I cut this material, it's going to automatically mushroom out or sort of uh, splinter out, and it's going to happen fast. So it's not like it's you know, after messing around with it or, or something. As soon as we cut this material, it's going, to, it's going to mushroom out. And again, this is untreated XC116. I'm just going to go below the tape line here. Uh, obviously so we don't have the tape interfering with the cut because actually I'll, actually before I do that I'll cut into the tape line and I'll show you why they utilize tape when you cut with tape you're gonna get this effect right so it doesn't splinter but I guarantee you as soon as you take that tape off that wick is going to again mushroom out so here's what happens when you cut the material below the tape line and and uh, go to cut through it Wow, <laughs> as you can see, it immediately mushrooms out. And this isn't some trickery, this isn't some like camera trick, this is just the material as it expands automatically when it's not been treated. Here, I'll just, I'll cut even a, a section below it again. Oops, I didn't quite get through all those. Um, but you can see, you know, as you cut it, it, it just mushrooms out. There's just it just can't be any you know any more cut and dry you know here's another uh, you know strand of it. this is untreated material right here so again if I again this this top is taped I've taped it for demonstration so if you cut it boom mushrooms out obviously this is something that you uh, can see without any any hesitation without any question it makes it very clear, cut and dry, that this is untreated uh, XC116. The difference between what it looks like when it's treated versus untreated, here's a piece of, and this is just a small piece, unfortunately, I'm, I'm uh, treating another big batch right now, but this is a small piece of XC116 that has been treated. And when you cut it, you're going to notice that right there. You know, it doesn't mushroom out. It doesn't expand. You know, even if I even if I hit the wick or mess with it, you know, I can force it. If I pull those fibers apart, I can force it. Uh, you know, to come out a little bit. But by nature, it doesn't come out. Remember, this is what happened when we cut just plain cut untreated XC XC116. This is what happened, and this is what treated uh, XC116 looks like. When you cut it, it's a nice clean edge. Obviously, not this. So that's going to be the easiest way to tell whether your XC116 is properly treated or not. And that 
my friends, is why uh, some companies that sell XC116 with it taped up, and I'll just show you again why they do that, uh, where they tape it up, so like in the same piece that we just cut, uh, you know, they might put a piece of tape on it here like so, and then that's where they would make their cut, so that it would appear as though it's a nice, even cut okay but then as soon as you take this tape off <laughs> this, this is what you get I mean it's no uh, camera magic it's just that this wick or rather this material is not designed to hold together until it has been kiln treated until it's been properly kiln treated so this is a telltale sign of what not to use and if it were me uh, if I was trying to decide between buying it from a company that had a picture of XC116, you know, with a piece of tape on it, uh, versus uh, pictures uh, with the XC116 being held together, you know, very well actually, without uh, tape holding it together. You know, my personal choice would be to buy it from a company that that made it very clear that it was being treated correctly, uh, and by treated I mean kiln treated correctly. Uh, we here at RBA Supplies uh, treat it be above and beyond uh, what the manufacturer recommends for treatment. So the manufacturer, uh, which is 3M, makes it very clear that there are two types of treatment for XC116. The first is what they call a, a uh, kiln, I'm sorry, not a kiln, a heat cleaning, and the second version of it is called heat treatment, and there is a big difference. Heat cleaning is basically designed to clean off any excess oils that might be on the wick or to clean off any excess uh, you know, sizing or material. It's not designed to bond those fibers together and it's not designed, uh, heat uh, cleaning is not designed to properly get all that stuff, uh, you know, it's not, not that there's a lot of stuff, but those chemicals out of the material. Heat cleaning is not what you want. Heat treating, however, is. And the difference between heat cleaning and heat treating Heat cleaning is um, above, I think, 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is basically a flame, uh, and it can be uh, cleaned for you know less than I think 15 minutes. Uh, again, that's just burning off the out outside materials. That's not properly treating the the material. Heat treatment, however, uh, the minimum requirements for that are 1650 degrees, roughly. Uh, and a minimum of 12 hours. So we here at RBA Supplies have decided to go above and beyond uh, those minimum recommendations and we actually heat uh, treat our uh, uh, material at almost 2000 degrees. So it's required to be treated at 1650 degrees roughly. We treat our material at 1971 uh, degrees precisely uh, and we treat our material for 15 to 16 hours uh, versus the required time of 12 hours. So our material, our XC116, is being treated hotter, it's being treated longer, and thereby is, is, uh, we take that extra precaution to make sure that we properly um, prepare this material uh, for you so that it's the best possible material that you can get your hands on. Uh, unfortunately, some other stores and companies out there, not naming any names, but, uh, you know, I think, I don't know if they're taking shortcuts uh, or if, you know, perhaps they just don't understand, uh, you know, what the uh, requirements are for treating. I'm not real sure, but uh, what I do know is that RBA Supplies does properly kiln treat, heat treat our XC116 material. Uh, so those first two samples I showed you was one that's untreated, the other one was just plain treated, and then just real quickly, uh, this is a, a, a piece of XC116 that has been kiln treated by RBA Supplies, and I have also boiled it uh, for an hour myself just because I wanted to see what the differences are. And again, this material, after being kiln treated by RBA Supplies and, and boiled for an hour by RBA Supplies, when you cut it, again, you're going to see it goes straight to a solid, uh, you know, a so not a solid, but it doesn't, it doesn't mushroom out uh, like the untreated material does. So this is kiln treated and boiled uh, versus kiln treated by itself 
and, uh, and completely untreated that I showed you to begin with. Uh, we do not boil or we don't offer a boiled product at RBA Supplies and the reason for that is anybody can boil the wick uh, when they get it at their house at, at, for, them, you know, for themselves. Um, heat, heat, properly heat uh, treating the material is not something that's easily done and so we want to make sure that we do that to take care of that for you uh, and, then, and then leave it up to you as an option of whether you want to boil the wick or not. Uh, we've used it both ways. We've boiled it uh, and we've just used it straight out of the bag where it's been uh, kiln treated correctly. Uh, really, to be honest with you, uh, either way works great for us. Um, I'm not sure that I have a preference, to be honest, whether uh, it be boiled uh, or not boiled after being treated. Uh, the advantage to it being boiled is maybe that might just get you know, some of the dry materials out of it, uh, which I could see being beneficial. Uh, I think that the disadvantage to it being boiled is to some degree it sort of makes the wick a little more fluffy is the best word I can use to describe it. It kind of takes away some of that sheen uh, that it has on it and it, it I think it, you know, maybe it, it uh, in the long term effects of it, it might break down the material a little more. You know, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly to what percentages uh, but if you go on our site, rbasupplies.com, you can see a picture of uh, kiln treated uh, and boiled. And you can see a picture of just kiln treated. And you can kind of see what I mean by the differences of, of the wick, how it looks sort of fluffy if it's been boiled as well as kiln treated, and how it sort of doesn't look fluffy. It kind of has a, uh, kind of a marvelous sheen to it uh, if it's been uh, kiln uh, treated. Either way is very uh, safe. It's the safest that you can use on the market. And, and the one thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is utilize wick that has not been kiln treated. I can't stress that enough. I can't make that any more clear. All right, so the other thing that I want to show you how uh, show you about is the, uh, the cleaning abilities with XC116. So what I've done here is something a little extreme. Actually, I'll even say a lot extreme. Uh, I've taken a piece of wick, and I'll show you a close-up of this wick here. Let me change my camera over so we can get a, a good, a good uh, close-up on it. Uh, this wick has been <laughs> dropped in a little uh, batch of motor oil. And you're going to ask yourself, well, gosh, why would you do that? Why would you dump the wick in motor oil, right? And the reason is I thought to myself, how can I show just how gunky a wick can get? And I couldn't think of anything better than to show that or to illustrate that than literally a blackened wick blackened with used murder oil out of my uh, Forerunner uh, vehicle. <laughs> this is actually from an oil change I did, oh, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so. And it was pretty nasty oil as it were. Uh, actually, here's the, the oil that I used, as you can see. Uh, it's it's pretty black and disgusting. Uh, so anyway, uh, I want to show you how well this cleans up, though, is the point to this. So I'm going to take my handy-dandy torch, and this is just a torch that you know you can get at uh, Menards or uh, any you know hardware store. Uh, Menards or uh, maybe Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, this is just a little $10 torch. And we're going to turn this wick, which is right now jet black, we're going to change it into a nice clean uh, wick. So I'm just going to start my torch here and I'll show you how the burn goes. So right now we're just burning off the material that's on the wick and as you can see uh, this is not <laughs> probably not something you want to do too often in your house burning you know murder oil on uh, a wicking material but that's okay. That first burn was so that we could just get the excess oil off. And you can still see the wick is still black, you know, because it's it, that that oil that's been soaked into that wick is still in there, and it's gunky. This is sort of simulating a gunked up wick that's been uh, gunked up after, you know, how much time of, of vaping uh, material or vaping liquid. So what we're going to do now is get a good clean on it, and to do that, we're just going to heat it up with a torch until it cleans up. And you're going to notice that it's turning red uh, and that's basically what you want to do is you want to fire that wick long enough 
till it starts turning clean and I'll try to get the fire so that you can see it in the camera sort of what's happening here you can literally it almost looks like you're painting the wick clean with the torch uh, you just kind of go back and forth on it and what you're doing is burning all that material that was in it burning it right out and it just it's, it's hard to give you a better visualization than that where you literally have seen a wick that was literally pitch black with used motor oil and has been completely cleaned now with that said I mean I'm not gonna vape on this because it had motor oil on it I'm not an idiot uh, but what I wanted to show you though was was just how powerful this wick is in terms of holding its shape holding its structure holding the cleanliness of the wick uh, after having motor oil on it and then being properly treated or not you know properly kiln treated of course and then cleaned with a torch look how white that is compared to the wick that we had started with which was dumped in in this black motor oil so that's pretty impressive you know right there alone that's that's sort of part two to this video is the cleaning ability of XC116 from RBA supplies that wick cleaned right up from being pitch black with used gunky motor oil all over it if that doesn't impress you I don't know what will and you notice that the wick as well the other thing I wanted to mention too this is that same wick we just cleaned even though we just torched it we just fired it we just literally put a torch on it with used oil for I don't know probably two minutes this isn't hot at all I mean I can it's not it's not hot at all it's completely cooled back down in a matter of moments uh, and that's the the beauty of that ceramic material uh, what else could we talk about about XC116 oh I know what we can talk about uh, a burn so I've got here a Nemesis clone uh, that's available on our site rbasupplies.com and on top of the Nemesis clone we have a Nimbus dripper and on top of the Nimbus dripper I have a, a dual coil uh, set up we've got uh, just a roller coaster loop uh, there with uh, two coils and I want to show you you know how well this material uh, will soak up the, uh, the liquid and then how long it'll burn. So I'm going to go ahead and throw up a screen region here and then I'm going to put a clock up and when the second hand on that clock hits uh, 8.45 and 30 seconds I'll start burning this wick or burning this uh, uh, juice to see how long we can get a burn without a red coil. So basically right now we're going to start the burn and you can see that obviously the vapor production with this Nemesis clone with a Nimbus dripper on top and the XC116 set up in a roller coaster loop on top of that is working like a charm. It's got great vapor production uh, and we're going up on about uh, 30 seconds right now, 30 solid seconds of vapor production with this particular build, uh, XC116 on a Nimbus, on a real Nimbus uh, with a Nemesis clone uh, from RBA Supplies. Uh, the XC116 material is just sucking the wick, or rather sucking the uh, juice, which happens to be fluid, uh, through that material uh, pretty darn well. And, you know, for those of you who know fluid, you know how thick fluid is. And when I uh, set the, the fluid in this wick, I dripped it onto the top of this roller coaster loop, loop rather, and let it soak into the wick. So we've passed by a minute now, and we still don't have any red coils using fluid for the uh, e-liquid on XC116 on the top of a Nemesis clone uh, with a Nimbus dripper. Coming up on almost a minute and a half solid burn with still no red coil. A minute and a half just passed and we still don't have a red coil. It's still finding the e-juice inside that uh, wick from the from from all around the wick and pulling it towards the heat pulling it towards the coil and we're just now right there we just got a red coil at one minute and forty five seconds one minute and forty five seconds folks on a dripper with fluid uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, with uh, a fluid on uh, XC116 on a Nimbus dripper with a Nemesis clone with XC116 as the wicking material. One minute and 45 seconds. That's pretty impressive. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, that answers uh, a lot of the questions of how to tell if your XC116 has been kiln treated. That answers uh, the question of uh, you know how well does it wick? You know, obviously, if it's able to wick for a minute and 45 seconds straight with a very thick juice with fluid, and it's still able to suck that juice through the wick like it's you know going out of style, uh, you know that's pretty impressive. And then the other thing we covered was how well XC116 cleans after it's been on a dirty wick. And again, that's the testament right there. That's the piece of XC116 that we cleaned. That piece used to be jet black with used motor oil all over it. That's pretty impressive. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up on the website, rbasupplies.com. Again, that's www.rbasupplies.com. Uh, you can email me directly. I am jeremy at rbasupplies.com. That's J-E-R-E-M-Y at rbasupplies.com. You can find us on our Facebook group page at facebook.com slash groups slash RBA supplies. Uh, or you can just go to, like I said, directly to our website, www.rbasupplies.com. If you have any questions about this particular material or about anything that we offer, we would be happy to answer those questions for you. And we look forward to having you as a customer. Uh, one last thing I want to speak to is that fact there alone. Uh, customers. One of the things that are is very, very important to us, in fact I would say it's probably the most important thing to us, is our customer satisfaction. And that's the reason why we love providing this product to the community, is it's something that I think was long overdue uh, for a vendor to provide a solidly constructed, uh, safe material that's been properly treated the way that it was supposed to be treated. Uh, and we are happy to provide that service to you guys. And, and you know, if we can do anything to help the community, if we can do anything for you personally as a customer, uh, you know, we are happy to do what we can uh, to make everybody happy. So we are thrilled to have you as customers. We're thrilled to have you in the family. And thank you very much for watching this video. We look forward to doing business with you. Have a good day.